The following is a rebroadcast of TV50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, oh look at this. Look at that! He's, he's got it! Ready! Go for it, man! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Milwaukee Camp Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Got Looks good. good. That's good to go. It's a home run. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Park Place Lanes as Championship Week continues here on the wind. This is Candlepin Stars and Strikes, the finals of our annual mixed doubles event. I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Glad you could join us. And uh, we are left with our top two seated teams. And uh, on paper, this looks like a terrific one. Well, on paper, that's the way it's supposed to be, I guess. Mm -hmm. I had some other people that wanted to change that a little bit, but <laughs> it didn't happen. But yes, one and two teams should be an interesting matchup. A lot of veterans and uh, some great uh, potential there. All right, let's meet our two teams. First of all, our number two seated pair. From Nashua, New Hampshire, Joe Ashline, his partner from Andover, Massachusetts, Carol Downey. Okay, uh, Joe comes in averaging 128, 683 was his roll-off score, Carol Downey at 116 and 637. All right, and last week they combined for a 372. It went down to the final box before they were able to beat John Maffeo and Tony Wellspring, so they move into the championship today. And the number one seeded team from Haverhill, Mass, Chris Sargent, and he is paired with Janet Pock from Concord, New Hampshire. Okay, and Chris averaging 130, his roll-off score 731. <laughs> he distanced the field by some 50 pins, and Janet Pock's at 121 and 665. All right, of course, big money on the line, $800 to the winners, $400 to the runners-up, and uh, we also have... $130 in the bonus ball contest. That'll be coming up at the end of the hour. So lots to attend to. We'll get this championship match in mixed doubles competition underway after these messages. Stay with us. All right, before we get to the action, let's just remind everybody how these uh, 10 bowlers for this series got here on Stars and Strikes and the mixed doubles this season. Again, the roll-offs were held separately for the men and the women. Here are the men's scores, as Dan mentioned earlier, by 48 pins. Chris Sargent uh, taking that number one spot with Joe Ashline number two and then on down the line. And the ladies' scores, Janet Pock with the big margin to take the number one seated position. Carol Downey number two and on down that line it goes. So, of course, the teams were combined, the two number ones, the two number twos and so on. And there you go with the, uh, with the teams. And we are down to our top two seated teams. So I guess that's the way it uh, is supposed to be. And it seems to be happening a lot lately. And uh, Joe Ashline will start this match now difficult thing to be is to win two matches in a row. That's right. <laughs> but Joe Ashline and Carol Downey will try to do just that. No, not quite on the seven pin. Yeah, it'll be a 10 box. It wasn't just a 10 box, Doug. It was a 10 box. <laughs> <laughs> he just, <laughs> I said it last week. I just, I just marvel at the way, he, how hard he can throw the ball and still be that accurate and punish those pins. Yes. That was pretty accurate. Uh, yes, or it was. Strike in the second. take long on the replay either. Chris Sargent. I'm gonna have a slight delay here because a pin has gotten loose on lane 31, so Cindy Sisson will take care of that for us. Chris Sargent, you may remember, made his uh, first appearance here on the wins last November. Came in as the number two seed. He threw a 418 and beat Chuck Langlois in the semifinals. And then guess who he ran up against in the finals? Joe Ashline. I wonder if he remembers that. Well, I'll bet he does. <laughs> Joe threw a 441 at him, and Joe, of course, uh, has already qualified for the singles tournament of champions. 
four horsemen and the seven pin for Chris. Boy, it was quiet in here before he it was, released it? that ball. I thought it was a golf match at first. <laughs> Of course, when you and I play, it's never quiet at a golf match because people are usually laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Ten or, box for Chris. Or we're laughing at ourselves. Yeah, that too. I know the Keelers back in uh, Pembroke really don't think you really exist. They just see you on the television because you said you're going to play golf with us a number of times and never showed up. <laughs> so. Big strike for Chris Sargent in the second to match the strike put up by Joe Ashline. I'm beginning to think you just appear on TV. You're really not a person. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a real person. I just play one on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Carol Downey filling Joe's strike. With an eight. And the 10. Spare leave this time, the 3 6. Key here is to nail the 3 pin. You got a wood behind, should help you. Yes, yes sir. Second mark of the match for them. Our first look at Janet Park, going to be filling a strike. Janet Park was here about a year ago or so in uh, ladies doubles competition. Her partner was Karen Butat. They won their first match before being eliminated. Overall, this is Janet's seventh appearance with us. And, oh, how about that shot? I was just about to say, if you've never seen Janet before, she is one of the best. Splits the two and the four. Catches enough of the two to come back off the wall for the three. Spare on strike. Yeah. And six on the spare. Yes. Two in a row. Three in a row, I should say. Two in a row for Janet. Three in a row for the team. 56 and a ball coming in the fourth. Joe Ashline will be working on a spare now. Joe from Nashua works for Cronin Electronics. Joe and his wife Robin have uh, three children, whom you've probably seen on the show if you tune in now and again. Derek, Cody, and Amanda. Missed that wood. He wanted a piece of the wood for the seven pin. I was saying to Joe last week, though, we've never seen Robin on camera. We're just going to have to work on that a little bit. See if we can get Robin to come up there and say hello. But we know she exists because she's that's right behind the scenes here. <laughs> <laughs> Half Worcester plus one. Kicking out the seven pin. For the spare, no. So it'll be a 10 for Joe, two 10s in fact. And a chance for Chris Sargent here to put together a lead for the team. It's all even right now, but Fill on this spare left by Janet Pock will establish the, the lead for now. And 
end, it will be eight. All he has to worry about is throwing the ball too hard and having the ball fly up over the seven pin. The angle of the wood is good for the carom. Oh, that's exactly what it did, up and over the seven pin. Almost have to ease up on the ball a little bit if you throw real hard, but sometimes you lose the accuracy when you break your rhythm like that. But it's 73 half, not a bad start. But with the 73 only leading by seven. So it's not necessarily chop liver on the other side, huh? 66. <laughs> Chris back in the head pin, Brooklyn on the head pin, Brooklyn side, and they'll shoot at the 6-10 with a little help. Be careful on, it's not full on the six pin though, with the angle of the wood, the line will throw that right in front of the 10. Right. He's got it for the spare. That's four marks for the team. And they have the early lead. Carol Downey held on to that ball just a split second too long. Pulled it to the left. Four horsemen plus the eight pin. And the nine. 85 through seven. Made a shot like this last week, opposite side. Oh, How about again. yes! <laughs> One more time. Great shot for Carol Downey, mark number three for the team. This is on a spare for Janet Pock, and it's seven. Missing the head pin, but a decent break. Just the one, two, and eight pins left. So it's a seven drop on the spare, as Doug said. Increases the lead to 14. One, two, and eight with wood wedged in between and just a little bit too far to the right. A quick reminder about our friends at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan on Main Street, Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. Come to Salem and save Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, faithful sponsors of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Janet. So a chance here for Joe Ashline to cut into the lead a bit, working on that spare left by Carol Downey. <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> These pins could be moving for a half hour. Seven in the nine. A couple pieces of wood. Of course, deciding for him is a little different than the rest of us because he throws the ball so hard. Give him a few more options. Remember several years ago we were fooling around, we had the radar gun here yeah. and we were getting readings on various <laughs> bowlers. I'll bet Joe would be as quick as about anybody up there. Oops. No scoring error here. This keyboard seems to be jamming up on me. <laughs> there it goes. Ooh. Now the one and the seven for Joe. Had been standing down and saying, not me. <laughs> and here it comes. No defense. Oh, oh my. 
too much down there on the deck. And it goes as a nine box, a 121 for the team of Ashline and Downey to start the match. Chris Sargent now up to finish out this first game. Chris off target, but look what happened. The one, nine, and 10. Some real favorable wood against the nine pin angled right towards the 10. Catch a piece of the head pin. Oh. Still got to catch that object pin. That time the head pin was the one he needed to grab. Give himself a good chance of making the spare. Grab it this time for 10. 119, seven pin advantage. Chance to put it in double figures with a mark, though, here in the 10th. $800 to be shared by the winning team. $400 will be shared by the runners-up. And, of course, next week here on Stars and Strikes, we begin a brand new series. And will the seven go? No. Next weekend on Saturday at noon, Stars and Strikes doubles. And here on Sunday at noon, Brand new series will begin. You got a piece of wood next to the seven, and you another piece way out in front. Always got to be careful. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Fifth mark of this first game for Sargent and Pac. 129 plus a ball. And? Nine again, 138, and a lead of 17 after one game. Chris Sargent and Janet Pock with the advantage over Joe Ashline and Carol Downey. We'll be back in a minute. This is game two. <laughs> Janet Pock leading off with the half Worcester right. It's really hung that ball out to the right, never came back for. Her. Make the adjustment now, come back on the head pin. Too much to the left this time. Janet from Concord. Although she does a lot of her bowling here at Park Place Lanes. So a bit of a home court advantage here. Janet works at New Hampshire Optical Company with an average of 121. Three, six, four, seven for Janet to play with. Trying to split the three, six. Got a shot, <clears throat> not quite. And it's a nine. I think Janet thought she might have lost that one completely, but it <laughs> stayed on the lane for the nine box. Well, two openings for J uh, Carol Downey to work on, trailing by 17 now. Championship week. Game number two. We have seen some terrific bowling here in this series. We really have. Four horsemen left for Carroll. Now Carroll played that one a little bit farther to the right than she wanted. Right. And the 10. Oh, 
Altogether, this is Carol's 19th appearance on Stars and Strikes. She's only lost four times. Pretty good percentage of wins. And there's the spare. That's the reason why. Had to Making, wait for it a little bit, but... That's right. Making shots like that. Chris Sargent. Right through the middle. 3-6 on the right. 2-4-7-8 on the left and no playable wood. Look out. And the eight box. What Chris just did there on that second ball going through the middle when I was a youngster, we used to call that a library ball. You ever heard that expression? No, a library ball? Quiet? Shh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or you're from Marblehead, right? Yeah, yeah. You're a little more sophisticated <laughs> down that area than we were. <laughs> we might have caught it in an alleyway with a strong wind or something. <laughs> and no mark in this box. So four open frames for the team of Sargent and Pock starting off the second game. Two eights. Joe Ashline coming up now on the spare left by Carol Downey. And he goes through the middle. <laughs> Dances in front of the camera. Yeah, he did a lot of traveling. Whoa, on that did one. he? I thought he was, really he was almost in hook sitting back again. <laughs> <laughs> Nine, 32, took eight off the lead. Lead is now down to nine pins. Bruce Young and Tony Marie Baldinelli came up with a big 4-0-3 in the first week of this series, but even that match was close until the third game, and then the last two weeks have gone down to the last couple of boxes before they've been decided. This one looks like it might be headed the same way. Joe Ashland, the five, seven, and nine. Sounds tough, and it is. Especially with no wood. Nine box for Joe. We will pause now to contemplate all this. About halfway through the championship match here on Mixed Doubles, our annual series here on Stars and Strikes. More in a minute. Janet Pock as we resume here. <laughs> Janet and Chris Sargent, the number one seeded team. Boy, their combined roll-off score, 1396. Not too shabby. That's uh, just, you know, just a fraction under 140 each. Hey, how about this? <laughs> Well, Janet left the ball on the plate. That's tough to do. That really is. And it almost worked for the spare. <laughs> Just sitting there laughing at us. Cindy says I'm taking care of it, being very careful not to knock down the five pin. But she knows if she does, we'll make her set it up again. <laughs> and those days are long gone by, That's right? That's right. <laughs> it's a very delicate operation right there. And Janet takes care of it for the 10. But it's five open frames for Sergeant and Park now. It begins to wear on you after a while. They put that first one up in each game. Gotta relieve some of the tension here and loosen yourselves up. This time the three, five, six, and 10. 
Yes. Ooh, just light enough to keep the three pin in play for the 6-10. Thought it might have been a sh tad too light, but there it goes. A three pin off the wall for the 6-10. And there's their first mark in the second game. Carol Downey now with the 1, 2, 7, and 10 with Wood, which could make a big difference here. Get some of that wood flying around. Nope, too full on the head pin. We tape candle pin stars and strikes. Our Sunday program here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire, which is located right on Route 28. Not very far from Route 93 off Exit 3 near Canopy Lake Park. And when you're in the area to stop by Park Place Lanes for bowling or to stop into Jonathan's Lounge for some evening entertainment, be sure and pay a visit also to the Willow Tree North Restaurant located right here inside Park Place Lanes. The proprietor, Rodney Cronin, does a terrific job with the food here and great prices as well. And it's where the crew eats. That's it. <laughs> I think they should adopt that as their slogan. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> right through the middle, five on the spare. Oh, how about it one time? Oh, he deserved that shot. He cut the two pin in between the three and the six. And it came back again. He had two shots at that spare. What an effort. Let's look at it. Watch that two pin right between. <laughs> Comes back and almost still picks it up. Chris in the pocket. Solid nine drop, leaving the seven. Gonna wait for the wood, though. That's gonna be in a bad spot. Well, you know, it could, the ball could carry him off the wall. I wouldn't be afraid to go right at the red line. Hmm, I think he was thinking maybe about playing it high. Yeah. And that, well, that, obviously, that's the ideal way, but then if you missed it, watch. No, nope, he throws too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Something you don't have to worry about? No, I don't have to worry about. See, I have to play these, play these shots for these guys with this talent. <laughs> I could never throw that hard. I wouldn't last a string and a half. <laughs> Joe Ashline. Joe says, I can throw harder than that. <laughs> Joe's working on a spare, and he takes seven. Oh. And that tightens things up a bit. Now just a seven-pin difference for... Chris Sargent and Janet Pock. Joe's got a shot at this, let's see. Yep. Oh yes, great shot. Had a feeling it might go. Lead is seven, anything seven or more. Seven will tie the match, anything above that, well, they'll take the lead for the first time. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. Time out. <laughs> Speak too soon, Dan. One and eight pins left. Great break off the, the head pin. For the spare? No. Sliding by. You can do that on the first ball and get away with yeah, it sometimes. Sooner or Not later. On the second yeah, ball. Sooner or later, you're going to have to hit that head pin. <laughs> uh, still there. Still there. So, the difference just one. Now in the match as Ashline and Downey take the lead. Janet Pock finishes game two. And again, Janet off the head pin. Had got a decent break, one, seven, eight. For the spare? Yes, indeed. Yes, recovers that, that time for the spare. That's seven marks for the team. Each team has one strike to this point. A little full in the head pin, leaves a three, six, four, seven. Six drop on the spare. 
Outside. Oh, how about it? No, not quite. Boy, if the wood, again, if the wood hadn't been there. Had a possibility of making maybe it. Maybe so, yep. Because mm -hmm. it looked like uh, the pin that came over to get the four and seven hit the wood instead. And that disturbed the shot. Good effort, though, and a 102 for a 240 after two for Sargent and Pock. Will that be enough for the lead? We'll see. One, two. Six and ten. Piece of wood right in between the head pin and the six pin, which should help. She's got to have the head pin. Oh, and again, teams are missing the object pin. Well, Kara will come into the 10th and final box of this second game. If she marks, she may give her team the lead. If not, they will be trailing. And to take the lead, it's going to take a great shot. 3, 6, 10 on the right, piece of wood behind those three pins. 4, 7 on the left, and a piece of wood in front and in, out in front of those two. Let's see. No. So Sergeant and Pock will maintain the lead, although it will be smaller. Carroll takes the 10, 114, 235 for Ashline and Downey. So just five pins the difference. The third and final game will decide the championship. We'll be back. Joe Ashline testing the slide on lane 32 as we get ready for the third game. Needs one of those six pin advantage slides. <laughs> and he's off the head pin. Needless to say, I've seen all these four bows a little sharper than they are right now, but the match is close. Just five pins separating them. 10 box for Joe. Yeah, those uh, 10 boxes like that one right there could be important before this is over. Seven marks for Sergeant and Pac to this point. Six for Ashline and Downey. Time Joe got a piece of the head pin. Two, four, seven left. That wood on the left is way out in front of the two pin. That's a good uh, 18 inches or so, even though it doesn't appear that far. Joe's got other wood to be worried about, too. Interesting to see what happens here. <laughs> he takes that front wood and uses it. Well, that's a good way to start. Ten box and spare. Trailing by five. You can see the replay of that. Chris Sargent now. Chris just grabbed oh, a piece no. of the headpin, oh, look no. at the seven. Oh, oh. my. It rocked, it moved off its spot, well, but it stood one up. One option here. <laughs> yeah. Got to hit the wood and hopefully you get something coming back. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Best case scenario here, they lose one and count. That's what it is. So the lead now is four. Hasn't this been a great series, though? It really doubles. has. <laughs> Some great, great, great matches. Big scores, close ones. Final box victories. Oh, oh there yes. it is. Big strike. He wow. Wasn't, he wasn't far from that kind of a break. The last box, he left the 7-10. That was just as good a ball as that one was. Didn't get the break the first time. That time he did. What a huge strike that was. That was on a spare. Carroll pulled that one badly to the left. Just three. Keep in mind, next Sunday at noon here, we will be returning to our singles format. We're still looking for two more qualifiers to the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, the sixth annual event, which will be coming up in just a couple of months. 
be starting to give you the dates for those shows uh, in a little bit, so you can mark them down. So you can camp out in the parking lot, make sure you get a good seat. <laughs> and Carol's right back in the pocket, this time the seven pin. Let's see where the wood settles down. Everyone's saying back, back. Carol's got to wait this out till that wood settles. It stays right there, obviously. She'll have two options. Oh, should have took the second one. Went in between. <laughs> Sometimes that's maybe worse if you if you have two options. Yeah, because you're thinking, now she's going to play the wood, and of course she missed it that way too. But when it's there, you say, well, I can play the wood. Now it moves out, and it moves out at an angle saying, I can still play the wood. So it gives you in your mind two options. You've got to make up your mind before you start your approach. And it looked to me, as you said, in the middle, like she was undecisive at first. Anyways, strike up for Janet Park to work on increasing the lead. Leads by just one plus this. And again, she looks badly to the right. Obviously, she's a little bit behind herself. Let's get the ball out further on the lane. Still with something to work with here, though. Yeah, she seems to recover that second second ball. Well, not that time. Seven fill on the strike. The lead is eight now for Sergeant and Pac. Ooh, but now it drops back to six with the seven box there in the third. Big nine drop this time for Janet, leaving the seven pin. All alone. I wonder if she's thinking about Carol Downey's miss. That's one, time, one good thing about not watching your opponent. No, she's right on it. The spare up in the fourth. So the lead right now is seven, but a big spare there in the fourth for Janet Park. That should increase the lead. And we'll be back with the final six boxes of this championship match in a minute. Joe Ashline now. Just six boxes to go in the match. This is a good one. Joe and Carol, of course, have to bat first the rest of the way. We saw Joe make one of these last week. That was without wood. This one he had some wood and he almost did it again. And the 10. Let's check it. Catches a little bit of the wood onto the, onto the left part of the lane and it swings it back forward and clears out everything but the 10 pin. Good effort by Joe. Oh, mm. again, no break there. Two, four, six. Sounds easy enough. <laughs> Tried to cut it over, just missed it. So a bit of an opening here for Chris Sargent. Remember, he's working on that spare left over from Janet Pock in her last trip. There's a chance to push it into double figures now. Oh, beautiful pocket hit, but look at the leave. The eight and the 10. Well, anytime you got double wood though, they'll snap for you, so. Are we gonna try it on the left hand tip? And snap something towards the eight. Oh, oh yeah! I thought it was gonna go over the top of it, but. <laughs> what a shot. Just caught it on the left tip and almost up and over it. That's a big mark right there because that should move the lead to 20 or more. Depending on this fill, it does. The lead Six is now 21. 
Six is the fill, but the spare leave is looking better by the minute. One, two, nine, ten. Piece of wood behind the one and the two, as you can see. And looks like he's got a real shot at clearing out the nine and the ten, if he can catch the head pin. He's right on it. There it is. Three in a row. Three huge marks. Lead goes from one to 22 now and counting. Four boxes remain. Carol Downey for her final two. Gets a break on the seven. It's the five and the nine. Watch out for that wood, though. It started out in a bad place, and nine out of ten times she'll roll right back to where it started. Now, could be worse, but not much. She can get by. And oh, does. Just caught enough of it, but not enough to deflect the ball. Clutch mark by Carol Downey in the seventh. Still alive. Practically need the mark out now. Decent fills, though. It's got to hurry. Now she needs some break, and she got it. <laughs> seven pins. One, four, seven left now. She's got to be thinking head pin. Miss the head pin, you're not going to make it. Hit yes. it, you'll make it. <laughs> two in a row. Keeps big, the team alive. Yep, big marks right there for Carol Downey, her last two. Now Janet Pock, remember, Chris Sargent left her a spare to work on. Well, she's been missing the head pin to the right. She's not going to do that all day long. Now's the time to get on the head pin, and she does. It's a seven pin drop. Two, four, six. Uh, three, four, six. No wood. Mm, close to cutting it over. Even brought the wood out of the channel. Well, with that eight box, the lead right now is 20. But remember, the spare up in the eighth. They've left seven pins standing here in this final game, too. Which, as you said, could come back to haunt you after a while. Oh, oh a there's big a big strike. Huge strike right there for Janet Pock in the eighth. That will preserve the 20 pin lead going to the final two. That might again the game breaker right there. Well, Joe knows he's going to have to uh, at least mark out. Now, four fill didn't help at all. Eight for 99 through nine. And Joe unable to convert and that will just about do it. The nine box, 108, and a three game total of 343. So this next ball by Chris Sargent will mathematically take care of it. For the team of Sargent and Pac, they are at 102 right now and need just two pins to win the match. Two plus a few more. <laughs> the nine, one nineteen. Well, Chris can throw this last box just for the exercise as he and Janet Pock have won the series here on our annual mixed doubles event. They came in as the uh, clear number one seeds, each winning their roll-offs by big margins. And they come in here today and withstand the challenge of Joe Ashline and Carol Downey. And there's a nice spare in the 10th to wrap it up. 
369 plus a ball. Which means that, uh, Dan, for all four weeks of this mixed doubles series, the winning score will be 370 or better. That's very good. Mixed doubles on television. Eight and a 137 for a three game total, 377. Chris Sargent and Janet Pock win it here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back to talk with the bowlers and see if we can't give away a little bit more money in the bonus ball contest after these words. All right, welcome back to Stars and Strikes, and uh, we have our runners-up, Joe Ashline and Carol Downey, and uh, and also Amanda Ashline too as our special guest star. But uh, didn't didn't quite happen today. The the uh, the pins just weren't dropping today like they were last time. Um, I bowled pretty bad today, is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Carol did all right, and uh, I didn't hold up my. Uh, Fish here, so. Pretty uh, pretty tough competition too. Uh, Chris and, and Janet make a pretty tough combination. They're an awesome team. Yeah, yeah right. they really good bowlers. Well, we had the uh, second place prize money to share for you, four hundred dollars, and our uh, thanks for being here. We're running short on time. Amanda's got the check already. She's well trained, and uh, we'll be seeing you again soon. Thank thanks you. very much, Joe and Carol. Congratulations. And now it is time for Janet Pock to throw our bonus ball. Except I believe we're going to have to have a reset. Oh no, we won't need a reset. Okay, Janet is ready to go. $130 on the bonus ball. All right, and Janet and Chris, come on over and we'll chat with you real briefly here. We have a five that we need to match. So for $130. I don't get my hand stuck. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. Oh, a very neatly printed card, however, not a match for John Fitzpatrick of Goffstown. And uh, boy, John wrote a little note on here. I really enjoy your show and commentary. Must be directed at you, Dan. Congratulations. Uh, the wrong guess, so that means we'll be up to $140 next week, and we have a little cash to give away. Slide right in here so that we can uh, get you both on camera. And Janet and Chris, first place prize money, the uh, the $800 to share, and uh, nice job. A tough team that you beat, and uh, you got what you needed, especially in that third game. Yeah, they are um, very tough. You, um, you can't uh, open too much against them because you never know. I, I guess uh, it's only fair that, that you two should win this thing because you really had terrific days on the roll-offs. I know sometimes that doesn't carry over to when you get on TV, but this time it did. No, it's all right back to, you know, just one-on-one <laughs> -on -one and two-on-two, -two, so but it's good. Well, congratulations. Uh, a great day, and uh, we hope to see you both again real soon. Congratulations on the win. Thanks. Janet and uh, Chris, this round of applause for you, and uh, that wraps up our annual Mixed Doubles Series here on Stars and Strikes, and uh, it's always a lot of fun to see the, the, the different teams and the different combinations, but we had some terrific bowling in this series, too. Uh, you have to go back to Steve Vadney and, and uh, who's his partner? Uh, <laughs> Jackie Sterner. Yeah, Jackie Sterner. <laughs> to, uh, to find a ladder is as exciting as this one. This was close matches, big scores, everything you wanted. All right, don't forget, next weekend here on the wins. We will begin brand new series Saturday at noon on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Back here Sunday at noon for Candlepin Stars and Strikes here at Park Place Lanes. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody.